Special Thursday. <laughs> You're starting off with the pyrotechnics. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're going big, man. This is a fun amp. We're looking today, doing a first look of the Boogie Fillmore, and this is my jam. Um, Boogie sort of back in the day, kind of. My buddy Dwayne Shockwa, actually, my last uh, last call, um, call my wrote about Dwayne, he was the uh, guitar player for Glenn Fry for years, had his own deal, great guitar player, Paul McCartney, worked with all these people. But he has a boogie that's really, like one of the very early ones. In fact, it's so old that, you know, those um, label makers, you know, that you like stamp out labels, that's what actually all the controls are made with, with a label maker. But this amp kind of has that vibe. It's almost like a, super beefed up fender it's not and what i re really love about it too um i'm not a rectifier guy i get it if that's your brand of vodka enjoy it's just not my my thing this is kind of my thing what i love about it you've got two channels that are actually identical i'm not crazy about when you have multiple channels and it sounds like a different amp i kind of want it to sound like me only clean and dirty. It, I kind of want it to sound like the same rig, if that makes sense. When it's a real jarring difference, it, it, it just doesn't work for me. I like the, the uh, congruity, I guess, of it. So let's talk about what they're doing here. You have two identical channels, and then through their proprietary switch, you can go between them. Right over here, you've got the choice between 50 and 25 watts. I've got it on 25 watts mainly for you, Chris, because you. Um, I've lost most of my hearing, but you still have yours and you want to retain it. For now. I'm sorry, were you talking? I saw your <laughs> lips moving and I, I, I didn't. Uh, so uh, you've got the three band EQ, uh, gain, presence, verb, and it's a lush, you know, lush springy verb and a master. And then over here, you've got the same thing. And then over here, you've got a switch between clean, a little bit of drive, and, and higher drive. Uh, so you've got the option of leaving them both identical, and just one comes up a little bit for your solos, which I love that, or like I did on our intro, um, this channel's on the in-between, so it's just giving you a little bit more, and I've got the gain boosted there. In addition to that, in back, there is a effects loop, and I'm running this Dunlop uh, effects through it. So um, I'm running this Dunlop Echoplex through it. 
And then in front of it, I had this um, compressor, this old, as you can see, that's like a, I don't know how, I have had that thing like since I was a kid. I don't know how old it is, but it's an old, old cheap Boss compressor that I guess is probably now expensive. I got it for like $30 back <laughs> years ago. But, and this is my Forest um, Telecaster uh, that my buddy uh, Forrest made. So here it is straight in, no nothing. Um, with that just that verb going but I love having that and then maybe having the compressor in front of it to give you a little bit of a boost just make it spank a little bit more and then of course the effects loop is fun to me that's just like the perfect kind of Fender Tele tone, but maybe, actually I got a bunch of guitars here, let's try a different tone, shall we? Let's go down the buffet line. Let's go down the buffet line. Well said. So this one's cool. Um, how about, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's go with these P9, let's get aggressive, more progressively, more aggressive as we go. Um, but I do like the idea that with this amp, I, I like effects loops, I like, you know, your delays and jazz like that in there. Give you a clean, you know, ideally, you could just go one cable, I'm doing this, uh, you know, just one cable directly in and be done with it, which takes away a lot of the, the nightmares of stuff, you know, breaking, but. So this is my old 56 Les Paul. But how dreamy is that, right? In fact, we up that verb a little bit as we can. Love that, put on the delay. So, depending on the gig, like, you could make both these in the same channel, and then when you want just a little bit more, you know, you're here, and there you want to jump out a little bit more for a solo. So that's just straight in. And I love the fact you can have more verb on your, you know, on your sweeter one, and then take that verb down a little bit when you get it a little more overdrive. So you could literally comfortably cover a gig just running straight into this thing without anything. Although I, truth, I'd kind of miss. I, I like having that compression to bump it even more. So here we are, we're dirty. And then put something in front of it, just give a little bit of a boost. Great to have that option. Now, say you want something a little more aggressive. Um, why don't should we switch guitars again? Should we do some humbuckers with that? Why don't we? Ooh, you know what, I got an idea. Let's end on the humbuckers because that's when that's when all hell breaks loose. Let's, <laughs> let's try this Gretsch, get something kind of come in that vein. And uh, okay, so here we are, same channel, all that jazz. They're just nice and dreamy. Say we want to 
say it's a kind of an angrier gig. I'm gonna flip them both to this other one, which is the in-between setting. Now we got a lot more. Man, right? It's like you gotta go from Brian Setzer to Billy Duffy. That is kind of what I was thinking, man. Yeah, it is like, right, it, yeah. yeah. And then when we, when we engage this thing right here, you know, say you're playing in the cult. <laughs> you know, for instance, you're filling into the cult. You got, you got some aggression. Let me up this volume on the second one. And that's no pedals or anything, just straight in. Awesome tone. Hey, well, um, let me just tell you some of the details of it. Okay, um, two uh, Mesa 6L6s, two channels, as you said, three modes, um, reverb effects loop. Um, it's a Celestian uh, Custom 90 on eight ohms. Thing only weighs 45 pounds, which, uh, granted, 45 pounds is, well, it's kind of a lot for a guy like me. For a steroid pumping guy like Chris, no big deal. That's just a lunch pail. <laughs> That's a lunch pail for a, he, yeah. He, it, but for a, uh, for a skinny guy like myself, yeah, a little heavy, but but not anything like say, I don't know, like a, you know, I'm carrying around a 412 or even a, an AC30. Those are pigs. So. Boogie's always made kind of beefy amps, but it's a compact beefy, great for like clubs or arenas. Let's, speaking of arenas, let's play a guitar from this century. Let's get into uh, something more humbuckery. Let's see what this does. This is my old DG. Um, so you can feel that. Uh, other details, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of it. It's really a uh, straight, for Mesa Boogie, yeah, it seems pretty straight ahead. Normally, they have a lot of channels, a lot of switches. Exactly, it's, which is it's great. But yeah, it it it's it is great. It's its own thing. But I like this, man. I like that it, it kind of harkens back to the tones I like. You know, back when uh, Santana first started playing these amps, which I think he still carries around his original one back from the day. The tone was not rectifier. It's, it was more like this. So. Awesome. Okay, here we are in humbucker land. We might bring down the verb a little bit on that clean one, then we get into the dirt channel. time I couldn't even hear it over this damn loud guitar but although we are on time let's go ahead and just let me just give you this last channel setting this is where we unleash hell I mean I couldn't imagine why it dirtier than that but how great that you could have this one on the super clean you know and then unleash pretty awesome um, so that's the basics on this uh, 
check out the review online. We've got, so as, as most of you saw yesterday, we posted the Joe Bonamassa rig rundown. And I mean, just the pictures of that, of those guitars alone, is like fabulous, right? It's a traveling museum. Oh man. Yeah, it was just amazing. It, it was such a treat to, to see and hear all those instruments you know, played by a absolute master. It was really, really fabulous. So, great rundown. Lindsay L before that, how great was she? Um, and uh, if you haven't seen it yet, our axes and artifacts with that Lindsay Buckingham's, Lindsay Buckingham's actual uh, prototype of the Rick Turner guitar that he played from 78 or 79 for 25 years. Damn. I know, man. I couldn't believe that I was actually playing that guitar. I, I, it kind of freaked me out. I felt a little bit panicked playing that guitar. <laughs> it, was, it was just such a treat. So if you haven't seen that, watch that. That's an amazing guitar. I don't know how they pulled all those tones out of that thing, but they did. So watch it. I've said enough. Chris, let's, uh, let's put on some random drum machine thing and get out of here. Oh, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> 